In this episode, we start to build a Sky Island factory for aluminum casings, alclad sheets and another very important part. Yo, hello everyone! Welcome back to Pronto Play and Project Nuclear Mayhem in Satisfactory, where we are building a factory network for consistently providing 252 nuclear power plants with uranium fuel rods, take care of recycling all the nuclear waste and have a total output of at least 630,000 megawatts in the end. In the last episode we finished our cruise liner AI limiter factory, which has been our biggest structure so far and the amount of work and effort that went into this is insane. So if you haven't seen that one yet, make sure to check out the earlier episodes as well. But after finishing that, we now have our hands on 315 AI limiters per minute and made a huge progress once again. And today we will take the next step and deal with yet another necessary production. We are going to build an aluminum casing factory. But before moving on, I have some news. If you watch on a regular basis, you know that I always want to get your opinion on builds, advices on what I can do better and tips for inspiration, especially when I'm once again uninspired in terms of cosmetics. You already stepped in multiple times for helping out and getting the builds back on track. Hi, loving the project so far. Just a thought on placing these. If you can get them sitting on the foundation, use H to lock. Damn, I completely forgot about this feature. Hi, Chris. Thanks to this. Thanks for uh, joining the stream and thanks for the tip. Yeah, they added the nudging and the the holding setting to update eight. I completely forgot about this. Let's let's try it out. So for better communication and more transparency, I set up an Instagram page for the channel. Here you can always let me know what you think about recent builds or I can reach out to you for opinions on ideas that I have or keep you updated in between episodes instead of just disappearing for another week or even a month. And since you guys asked me about the Discord already multiple times, this is in progress as well. It's not set up quite yet because I have no experience at all about this, but I'll let you know once it is and then you can feel free to join the server. Alright, back to the video. In order to fully recycle the uranium waste into eventually plutonium fuel rods, we require 126 heat sinks for that. And while we already took care of the required rubber for that amount of heat sinks, we also need to produce 378 aluminum casings per minute. But I can already tell you in the end the output is targeted to be way higher. Because you might wonder, why deal with the part that is only needed at the very end of the process right now? Well. In the end of the last episode, I already teased that we will set up a production of another part that will step up our game significantly. If you listened closely and watched out for hints, you might have already guessed it. We are talking about batteries. Since we have to tap into bauxite and other resources for aluminum casings anyways, it will be extremely convenient to make use of that and get our hands on some batteries on the way. Once we have these available, we can transport parts or resources via drones and make our life way simpler. Of course, we will go through everything in details and step by step, but just as a heads up, the goal for the next factory is an output of 675 aluminum casings, 400 batteries and 200 alclad sheets per minute. And the production process I have worked out requires a bunch of different resources that we have to mix and match. We need copper, sulfur, crude oil, water and of course bauxite. So that already limits the possible production spots due to the distribution of resources across the world map. The spot where all needed resources should be the most accessible should be right in the dead center, somewhere between the Titan River Valley, Lake Forest and Bamboo Fields. So now that you have an idea about today's plan, let's head out there and find a place for our next factory. And here we are. Right at the borders between the Titan Forest, the Bamboo Fields and Crater Lake, we have all the resources that we need relatively close to each other. We have water and oil. We have sulfur. Copper. And of course, lots of bauxite. The issue is, this terrain here is nowhere near suitable to be building ground. So instead of building somewhere down here, let's aim for the sky. The idea is to build minimalistic pillars in order to lift resources upwards on it and build a factory sky island. Allow me to demonstrate. First step of today's factory is to take 350 copper ore and convert it to ingots. And since we have three pure copper nodes right over here, let's make it 1440 and bring it all the way up. So let's place some miner, shall we? Number one. Number two. 
and number three. And now I have to think about a way to merge all these three inputs so that they can go up one pillar. And the idea is to do something like this. A very thin pillar with the conveyor lifts for the copper ore around it. The foundations are also just to place the conveyor floor holes, so we'll delete them soon. But on top of that pillar I want to build a platform for the copper smelting. So let me finish the other lifts really quick. And the result is something like this. The copper ore will run up this pillar to the smelters that we will eventually install on top. And the smelting will take place on this circular platform. Although this took actually multiple tries with a lot of try and error, a rectangular platform would just be too boring in my opinion. I also thought of using the glass frame foundation so that the forest underneath would be better visible from the platform, but since we are so high up, the glass seems to be too reflective and the effect is not as I would have hoped. So we'll stick to the fixed foundations for now. Okay, now it's time to make use of yet another blueprint. And since we already have used some smelters for our steel factory, we can load up this one here with the 10 iron smelters and adjust it to our needs for this factory here. So we change all the iron ingots to copper ingots. Maybe also change the color to something more copper-ish. Yeah, looking much better. And now we save it as another blueprint for our copper smelters. Okay, change of plans. I adapted the blueprint a little bit and now we have not 10 copper smelters, but we have 8. So we directly have the definitive amount and no need to delete anything again after placing. And the idea is now to place these into all the three directions where the lifts actually end up from beneath. And if we now place another 8 smelters behind every already existing blueprint, we now have 48 smelters for our copper ingots in place. Again, some connections for logistics, power lines missing, but this will be taken care of ASAP. But before we actually finalize the setup, we'll leave this be for the moment. Who knows if further adaptations might be necessary, so let's continue with step 2 now. What a nice view on our smelting plate. Next up, we extract ourselves some bauxite. And for that, we will tap into four different nodes around here. Two impure, one normal, and the one in front of us is pure. That would give us a total of 1980 bauxite, but we'll only need 1800. And because the nodes are a bit further away from each other now, we will actually go with multiple pillars for the bauxite to be lifted up, rather than leading them all to the central one. So let's start with this one here. So first, a little bit of foundations and then a miner simply on top. Okay, and now we take our small frame pillar and place it somewhere directly in front of it. Somewhere here maybe. All right, I will do the pillar similar to the one over there and then I'll meet you again. All right, this one should be high enough already, a little bit smaller, but then again, the resource node is also up higher. And the next one is somewhere around here, over there. And then the two impure ones should be somewhere around this area. So let me take care of the other pillars as well. And once we see four pillars in the sky, we continue. All right, now we have four pillars rising into the sky and connecting these with foundations should also lead to a decent sized platform. And the platform now looks like this. I adjusted the pillars and lifts to all the same height and now we have a big platform for refining our bauxite into a luminous solution. Man, there's such a nice lookout spot. You can see all the different things that we have already built. Over there is our quick wire production. Over there, our stuff in the desert from our general playthrough where we prepared this save file with our central storage and everything else. Over there, our computer factory, our oil rig, if you haven't seen any of these episodes, feel free to check them out. All available on our different playlist. Anyway, let's move on. So the idea now is to build a total of 9 refineries in order to convert our 1800 bauxite into 2160 alumina solution per minute. And the input distribution checks out quite well. I already connected the two impure nodes over there, and by overclocking the impure and normal nodes to the maximum of 250%, 
and the Pier 1 roughly to 165%, we now have 3 bells of 600 bauxite each. And since the alternate recipe for sloppy alumina takes 200 bauxite per refinery, three groups of three refineries are just fitting perfectly. We will worry about the water input as well as the solution output later. And since we have already multiple blueprints with three refineries inserted, let's just use one of them for now and adjust it accordingly to our fitting needs. Because yeah, we are not quite sure about how to handle the water input as well as the solution output, I will set down three of these for the start and then see how it turns out, how we have to adjust them in order to fit our needs for the alumina production. Man, it's so nice to have machines so spaced out and a lot of room to work with. I should do this more often. Now we have the refineries in place with an input of 200 bauxite each. But now it gets a bit tricky. The total output of 2160 alumina solution cannot be handled in three pipelines because of the maximum flow rate being 600 per minute in this game. So the output of these three refinery groups here has to be divided equally into four groups. And on paper, I figured something out that should work. So let's put four fluid buffers here first. And initially I placed them on the platform, but let's actually sink them lower beneath. I really want to focus more on letting fluid input flow from above into something, for example the buffers here, so that there is no backflow. Alright, looking good. Now we divide the refineries into four pairs and the last one has to remain single. The crucial points for this fluid network to work are the pipeline junctions in front of the buffers. Because despite the max flow rate of Mark II pipes being 600 per minute, the junctions shouldn't be limited by that. So for example, if we set up our network like this, we now have two times 480 meters or liters of alumina solution coming into this junction. And the goal is to separate 540 per minute into this buffer and the remaining 420 should flow into this direction further. So basically the in and output each is more than 600, but according to the information online the junction shouldn't be the bottleneck. So let me finish our setup here and then we will see in the future if this works. And this is how the Alumina Solution Pipeline Network looks like. In theory there shouldn't be any bottleneck anywhere. So at the first buffer we have two pipelines of 480 alumina solution each meeting and 540 getting split into the first buffer with 420 going forward. Then another 480 alumina solution pipeline with another 540 going into the second buffer which leaves 360. Then another 480 with 540 getting split which leaves 300. And then the last single refinery adds 240 to the mix which checks out perfectly with the last 540 going into the fourth buffer. For now we will leave this be and dive into another resource which is necessary before we can handle the alumina solution further. I am aware that we also need to take care of water as an input, but the water network in this factory is a story on its own and it will make sense to wait with that until we are at a later point, trust me. So let's leave this platform and head over here to the crude oil nodes. The crude oil is necessary for producing two different parts. First, for 400 batteries we need 800 plastic which again require 1200 crude oil if we take the standard recipe for plastic. Second, in order to convert alumina solution into aluminum scrap efficiently, we want to use the alternate recipe electrode aluminum scrap. And for that we can take the heavy oil residue from our plastic production and convert it into petroleum coke for that exact recipe. And the three crude oil nodes down here should exactly add up to 1200 crude oil if we overclock all three oil extractors to the max, because we have one pure node and two normal ones. So once more, three foundations, three oil extractors, and this time the platform does not need to be that high, so hold please. All right, this platform is way bigger than the first two, but I'm positive that it needs to be, because not only do we need 40 refineries for the plastic, but also 10 more for the petroleum coke. And what do you know, there are blueprints prepared and ready. Let's place these refineries, shall we?
Damn, although the size of the platform was kind of a wild guess, the space was indeed needed. Of course, there is still plenty of space on this side here, but it shows once again that building rather too large than too small is a solid strategy. But now we have a total of 50 refineries on the platform. And since the petroleum coke will be mostly needed in this direction to meet with the aluminum solution, I place the coke refineries on this side pointed into the direction of our buffer platform. And now we need to build the next platform for converting our aluminum solution and the coke into 3600 aluminum scrap right in the middle of these two here. Okay, I thought I was done, but I just realized that this platform goes completely against what I just said about giving yourself enough space. This looks way better. This gives us plenty of room for the 12 refineries that we need for the scrap production, but more importantly the logistics that will most likely be a bit tricky again. Because for the aluminum solution input we need to divide into 4 groups of 3 refineries. The scrap output is very high, so it's gonna be groups of 2. And the water output has to be refed to the solution productions in groups of 3 refineries. But we'll make this work, I'm sure. Let's try it out how it'll go with two lines of six refineries each on this platform and then we will work out the logistics. So this is the machine layout and I don't know why I already set up the power lines but I did. Now the aluminum solution has to reach this platform and the refineries and in order to get the pipelines over here with a steady decline I worked out this solution here. All platforms are basically aligned with the world grid, but due to the different shapes, the edges do not align every time. So the idea is to rotate a foundation into the desired direction, which is straight to the buffers. Then we take pillars and pull them over. And finally place pillars and walls to achieve a linear decline. Then two pipes on each side can go through the walls via pipeline holes. And after cleaning up, this is the result. All that's left to do is to connect each pipeline with three refineries and alumina solution is set. Regarding the other scrap input, the petroleum coke, I built this structure, alternating between normal and inverted frame ramps and then pulling a conveyor belt through its center. This actually aligned amazingly because I used concrete ramps to work out the location of the scrap platform and because of this, these two sides here align perfectly, which is not the case for the solution platform on the other side. Maybe I should have done this for all platforms, so the connections between them would be cleaner. Well, another lesson learned for the future. Anyways, 720 petroleum coke will run this belt up to the scrap refinement. Now what's left is to settle the water output, and I mentioned earlier that this has to refeed into the solution refinement. Not only does this reduce the necessary water input by water extractor significantly, it's also the cleanest way to get rid of the water byproduct of the alternate scrap recipe. And we have to get rid of the water anyhow, otherwise it would simply back up and clog the whole production. This is why, in my opinion, this production chain is the smoothest possible way for aluminum while still keeping the conversion rate efficient. I'm sure there are ways to get even more out per extracted resource, but further min-maxing is not worth the hustle in my opinion. Of course, if you have any input that will teach me otherwise, go ham in the comments. I'm always glad to hear tips and advice for improvement, as you know. Alright, moving on. The water output here will be split into four groups and then be redirected to the solution platform. This will result in four individual water circuits. Is that the right term? So if there's any hiccups, we can troubleshoot quite easily. But maybe I should have kept the pillars and walls when setting up the first pipelines for the alumina solution. But yeah, now they're deleted, let me work something out. Okay, sorry I got confused for a minute, forget what I said a minute ago. These are not four groups of water circuits, but groups of four, which is three groups, because we have three groups of three solution refineries over there. And the four on the back, these two and these two, will be merged here at the front to keep the pipe layout a bit more symmetrical. And then the water goes up there in these three pipelines to the solution platform. And I think we should put up some billboards very soon on each platform and name them so that we are all on the same page, especially even when more platforms will be added in the future. But first I will finish the water network and then we continue. And just a few minutes later the water pipelines are completed. Down at the scrap refinement we also have Mark II pumps, so the water gets all the way up to the solution refinement platform. And I also added some billboards down here, up there, 
and at the plastic and coke refinement. Just have to go to the copper smelting for doing that as well. But doing that I just noticed how insane the zoom in this game is. Look at that. You can read crystal clear the billboards down there from all the way here. You just have to be very careful with the mouse if you zoom <laughs> that far in. But yeah, quite insane. Haven't noticed this until now. Anyway, as soon as we merge the aluminum scrap output in pairs, we are good to go. And the scrap now has to go to the next platform, which we have yet to build. Alright, learning from the past, this platform is now aligned to the scrap refinement so that the conveyor belts can run smoothly to this spot here. And this one will be an aluminum smelting platform where we smelt the 3600 scrap into 1800 aluminum ingots per minute. For that, I took the blueprint, which we used over there at the copper platform, and just changed the recipe to pure aluminum ingots. Now we have to fit a total of 60 smelters on this one here. And the ingots actually have to be split into two groups of 900 ingots per minute each, because we will use 900 ingots per minute for the aluminum casings and 900 for the aclat sheets. And I think what we are going to do is placing the first set of 10 smelters over here. Then we align these to have our other set over there and then I will pull some foundations over each set of 10 and then we will have three sets of 10 smelters above each other so that we have basically three floors of aluminum smelting and then we will drag over the aluminum scrap on three stacks of conveyor belts per side as well so that we just can use some lifts and lift the scrap up that needs to go to the upper floors. So let me prepare this really quick. And that gives us something like this. Now I actually wanted to work out the aluminum scrap conveyor belts already, but I have to show you something really quick. I don't know why, but I keep repeating one mistake. I always do the pipelines first, like over here, and then when I want to do the conveyor belts, because this one does not only have a fluid output, but also a solid one, I notice that the pipelines are way too close to the outputs and the lifts don't fit, so I have to rework these. Have to do this for the other side as well, just as you can see here. But yeah, just so you know, <laughs> there's way more mistakes and errors and adjustments happening than you might notice in the videos. Anyway, back on track. Alright, the conveyor belts for the aluminum scraps are in place. We have, as you can see on the bottom right corner, way more mergers than necessary, but in my opinion it's still a very clean solution. And then we have a total of 6 conveyor belts running over here to the aluminum smelting platform. And then lifts, or for the bottom floor of course not, for getting all the scrap where it's necessary. And you know what, before we continue with further builds and platforms, I think I want to try out if everything runs according to plan now, if we start it up. So let me get some power here, get some final preparations. For example, for these three water circuits, there's still the water extractors missing. We only have the refeed currently, but the original water extractors still have to be set up. And yeah, once there's power and the final adjustments are done, let's see if everything runs according to plan so far. All right. We have dragged power towers all the way from our first quick wire factory that you can see in the distance where the main grid runs to this place and also power towers across the platforms which gives us sort of a main power line all over the place. And then there are multiple priority power switches that split the different production segments and now we are gonna start this place piece by piece. So let me go down to the oil extractors where the main switch is. Alright and by flipping this switch over here that is directly connected to our power line main grid. This should start up at least the resource extraction. So, 3, 2, 1. And now we should see some green lights on the oil extractors. Or blue even, of course, because they are overclocked to the max. And then on each line we now have power pumps or pipeline pumps looking pretty good. All right, let me head up there again. And now that the oil is reaching this place, let's actually start up our plastic refinement. Three, two, one. And all green lights. And 
this will back up immediately because the plastic can't go anywhere at the moment. I have to connect these again. But currently the plastic does not need further production or processing, so yeah, this one is still work in progress. Maybe I have to do a temporary container or a, an awesome sink so that we produce the petroleum coke. But for now, let's actually just see if everything runs according to plan. And if we are missing petroleum coke, maybe I have to empty out some of the refineries so that we can further check this production line. But this is looking actually quite good. All the green lights. Plastic is backing up. Heavy ore residue is traveling. So now, let's start the petroleum coke. Because here we should see definitely if it works or not. And here it comes. So there should be some green lights now. Very nice. At least the first one. So we know that something is happening. And there's the first petroleum coke. Of course this will take some time and also stop very soon because of the plastic backing up. But at least we know that something is working. And while we will leave this run for a while, let's actually head out to the solution platform in order to start the process up there. And everything here looks ready as well. Bauxite has already reached. I checked the water pipelines. Water's also there. So let's keep it going. All the green lights. Do we actually have the correct? Yes, Mark 3. There comes the alumina solution and let's actually check the buffers because there should be a considerable amount reaching already. Nice. Of course, if this doesn't get further processed into scrap, this one will back up all the way. But let's give it some time again. And after the buffers are a little bit more full, a little bit filled up, I will go to the scrap with you. Okay, now the buffers actually start to fill up. So this must mean that the pipelines out to the aluminum scrap platform are completely filled. So let's head out over there. And start the whole platform over here. And it looks like the petroleum coke is all the way backed up over here as well. Looking very nice. Very good. All right. So, let's get our hands on some scrap, shall we? And very, very soon, these conveyor belts should be very, very full. Yes, there it comes already. Damn, this is looking crazy. <laughs> Quite clearly, the aluminum scrap already backed up all the way. This went so, so fast. So let's actually go to this priority power switch and see if we get our hands on some ingots. And the place starts up. Very, very nice. I just temporarily placed some little storage containers over here to see if it actually works. And yeah, since these will go immediately further for further processing in the near future, there's no need to actually store them away too much. And also, I have no idea about the further layout. So yeah, I just went with two little storage containers to see if it actually works for the first minutes. But looking actually quite good. All green lights, all black smoke, and the scrap is running in. Nice, nice. Seems like up until this point we have done everything right in terms of production steps and machine and logistics layout. We will see in the future though if everything runs at a stable rate so that we can meet the target outputs for our aluminum casing, LCLED sheets and the batteries. Now before moving on I actually want to take a little step back because I got asked 
if I can share the production overview from our AI limiter factory in the cruise liner. And realizing that I haven't shown any overview for all the factories that we have implemented in this power plant network so far, I want to do this right now and show you what exactly happens in each of the factories that we have built up for our project Nuclear Mayhem so far. Alright, so first of all we have our rubber factory with the power towers right next to it. And here we extract 1200 crude oil and put these into 800 rubber as well as 800 heavy oil residue as a byproduct. The 800 rubber will be processed further very soon and the heavy oil residue gets mixed with 1600 water per minute to get out 1600 fuel by the alternate recipe diluted fuel and that we pump into close to 134 fuel generators to get our hands on 20,000 megawatts of power. And of course the power will be obsolete very very soon in the future once everything is running smoothly and we have the nuclear power plants but for starting up the process this is well necessary. After the rubber factory we built two other factories for concrete and silica and this one is the concrete factory where we extract 2340 limestone, mix it up with 1950 water per minute in the alternate recipe wet concrete to get our hands on 1560 concrete. And we will need 1512 concrete for the encased plutonium cells but for building up everything and to have enough concrete available we already built this one very early. We also built this silica factory where we extract 1530 raw quartz and process it into 2550 silica with these 68 constructors by the standard recipe. And we will need 1260 silica per minute for the encased uranium cells and 1260 more for non-fissile uranium very soon. And just like the concrete factory you can see that this is not even close to be finished and this is because I had no idea about the cosmetics but you already gave crazy good input. For example, somebody suggested that this might look cool if it looks like raw quartz rather than silica itself because silica would be boring. And this is a great idea, but I simply haven't had the time to take care of the cosmetics and I think I will save some of it up and make a big either yeah, video for cosmetics or stream later with you together where you will be able to join. Anyways, moving on, the next factory we built was the Quickwire factory and this one here is the Caterium ingots part where we take 1050 Caterium ore, mix it with 525 water and produce 525 Caterium ingots and the train brings it to the main building where we also take 1050 copper ore with 700 water produce copper ingots out of this and then we mix the Caterium ingots and the copper ingots in a total of 70 assemblers with the alternate recipe fused quick wire to get our hands on 6300 quick wire per minute. And these will be needed for the encased uranium cells as well. Then we have our steel factory. And at the first floor we take 2340 iron ore converted into the same amount of iron ingots with the standard recipe. Then from the top we add 2340 coal and mix these together in 60 assemblies for 3510 steel ingots and most of the steel ingots go to the constructors for the steel pipes with a total output of 1540 per minute and 1200 will be further processed very soon again at some point we just started to give ourselves a little bit of excess just to be safe and 1200 steel ingots go to the very top to the 20 constructors over there and produce 300 steel beams all with the standard recipe because yeah, there's basically no alternate recipe for steel beams or steel pipes available. And most of the steel beams will be necessary for the plutonium fuel rods in the last step. And then another 30 for further processing. So yeah, you will see in the future, in upcoming episodes, what will happen with these materials later on. And then of course our latest creation. No seriously, but I'm very very proud of this build. And here we have our AI limiter factory. And for that we actually had to set up another production for 6300 quickwire but this time we have it split into two different locations so this one here is the first one and the second one is an exact replica so these combined produce again 525 caterium ingots. The caterium ingots then get transported via train together with some copper that we desperately need for the rest of the input to this ship here. And then under deck we finalize the quickwire production 
have also some copper ingots getting produced into copper sheets with the alternate recipe steam copper sheets, a lot of water mixed into this and then we take the copper sheets and the quick wire and make 315 AI limiters per minute in 63 assemblers usually but here we have 70 assemblers in 7 groups of 10 just because the grouping makes the most sense this way and yeah in every group the last one is only on 30% clock speed but these AI limiters will be even further processed in the future very soon as well. So yeah, stay tuned to see what happens next with these. So this is all the production in our network that we have taken care of so far. And I think I will re-implement this overview after each factory is done so that you can see in detail what is happening exactly. And yeah, in case you want to have inspiration for your own builds or copy these, then yeah, feel free to do so. But this is also a nice recap and this is the state of our project. And now I want to ask you guys again what to do with this place in terms of cosmetic. Once again I have no idea on how to improve the looks of this factory, so if you have any suggestions, tips, ideas, please let me know, either in the comments below or on Instagram. But that's gonna be it for today, because I have to do further preparations and experimenting before we can continue this factory, but so far it's looking good to me. So if you like the build up until this point, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.